There you go. I was doing a sound check and I was muted. So <laughs> let's try it again. Sound check. One, two, one, two. All right. Let me get you a little closer to me. Amongst other obstacles. Volume's on, volume's on. You should better hear me now, right? Mic check, mic check. One, two, one, two. My mic sounds nice. <clears throat> All right. Test, test, test. All right, so I got to remember speaking to the mic. So welcome to the, 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 the new setup. Hope y'all like it. I'm going to take my hat off. I feel like it makes me even see me. Uh, hope, hope y'all like it. Um, so today we're doing... G E Smart H Q. All right, we got audio. All right, Untamed Kango, what's going on, man? See you on YouTube. Um, so yeah, so we're doing a G E Smart H Q device uh, overview and a demo, right? Because man, this thing—I I, don't want to—I I want Barry to leave, but man, this thing is game changing. I told myself, I said, I'm going to hold my enthusiasm to the end. I'm going to build up to it. But I just, man, I just, just diving into this technology. Uh, I've been team GE Smart HQ before it was even popular to be GE Smart HQ. Uh, Paul Brown, see you in the comments, man. How's it going, brother? Uh, as the uh, Encompass Day alumni, the first Encompass Day uh, American Vulcan Locker Room um, kit winner, Paul Brown, man. You get the green jacket, brothers, like at the ma the Masters. Um, so uh, appreciate you, appreciate everyone tuning in. Uh, try to get in here early because you know I do have a full time job, so <laughs> got to do just like you do. Uh, so got to get in and out. Um, but we're gonna go over to G Smart HQ. Um, this is something that's game changing. This is something you need to have for your business. Uh, we'll give you some nuggets, even if you're not doing GE. I'm going to give you some nuggets of knowledge here, too. Um, so we're going to go over, uh, we're going to go over a few announcements, uh, dive into the content, do a demo, uh, and show you how you can get GE Smart HQ, um, and even go over some pros and cons of it, right? Um, so uh, to start off, if you don't know who this is, this, this big uh, encompass, this big box over here, uh, I get it. You, you, you're new to the planet and never heard of Encompass. I get it. Okay. So those that that, that uh, uh, came in on a flying saucer and don't know what Encompass is, I'm a school you. Uh, so Encompass is uh, the country's largest authorized OEM part supplier. What does that mean? That means uh, we our parts come directly from the manufacturers. So you don't have to worry about aftermarket, you know, and, and we do have consumers watching this show also. Uh, so if you, if your technician comes to your home to repair uh, an appliance in your home, uh, be sure he's using Encompass parts. Um, that way you know it's OEM brand, right? If you don't have an Encompass account, it is still not too late to save your business. Uh, so my number is an email address is scrolling at the bottom. Uh, so you can contact me by leaning on your rep. Uh, and I'll get you set up with a wholesale account. If you are a consumer, you can still buy parts directly from Encompass. No need to log in, go right into the website uh, for retail. If you are a dealer, if you are a, or a technician, uh, you want to get a wholesale account so you get wholesale pricing. Um, so anyway, holla at your boy, uh, L O Y R. So uh, why are we offering this training? So this training right now is being live streamed, uh, across social media platforms. Uh, many of you watching on a social media platform right now. Uh, also on StreamYard is a link out there that you register on. And this is a compass way of filling in the gaps in the industry, right? Uh, I was a technician for 10 years and uh, took washers and dryers. If those watching my YouTube channel right now, 
you, you know that. Um, and so I understand the need for training, even myself. I, I'm a graduate of YouTube University. Anybody else? <laughs> Put in the comments if you are a graduate of YouTube University. Um, and then I also went to Gwinnett Technical College here in Georgia uh, for HVAC, went to HVAC school to actually fine tune my appliance repair uh, skills because at the time it wasn't uh, much around. Um, so this is our way of giving back to the industry uh, as a part supplier. We are one of the primary business partners of companies like yourself, right? So we're giving back to the industry. We're offering this for free. It's not trying to cost you nothing. And also, this is going to live forever, this video. So a lot of our videos, we get the, the, the information from the manufacturers. Uh, the live stuff that will stay on demand for you to watch will be available for you to watch forever. <laughs> as long as YouTube stays in business, they're owned by Google, so they're going to be around for a long time. YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, and whoever else comes out, uh, we, we'll be on there too. So you, you can watch this. So if you got to go, get it. So but, but stay stay tuned for the whole show. Uh, we're going to go over some good stuff. So let's get into, let me check my soundboard. Let me see if my soundboard works. Yeah. But I, I, got, a, I got a soundboard I want to mess around with. Yeah, I guess it's not working. All right. So let's go into my PowerPoint. And so this le this lovely GE washer I have next to me, that's my co-host right now, right? <laughs> uh, this GE washer is actually a used unit. So I like to use like real machines that, with the dirt and grime on it. Uh, when I can, right? Sometimes I use new stuff too, but so is this, I don't know. I'm just, I guess that's attacking me, man. I like the, the, uh, look at the, I need to get the real deal. All right. Hang on, y'all. I'm an appliance repair technician, not a streaming technician. So hang on. Uh, so that's there. This is an opportunity for you. Why are we pausing here? If you get your get your morning coffee in, uh, I had my coffee. I got my five a.m. this morning, uh, so I'm I'm now I'm hydrating because you know coffee actually uh, dehydrates a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, hang on. Un momento. If you are a servicer. Uh, feel free to put your name and phone number in the comments so the consumers watching, if they're in your area, in your state, they can call you uh, for service. And again, that's going to live forever on social media. So, uh, Or if you are a consumer and you want a referral, feel free to reach out to me. My number is scrolling below. And I'm just trying to pull up. PowerPoint, hang on one second here. And is there any, uh, also a couple of things. So if you are a consumer, uh, the GE Smart HQ device won't make any sense to you to have. Uh, there is a, a subscription for it. Um, but as a servicer, it makes all the sense for you to have. Uh, even if you don't do a lot of GE, um, you want to promote it, right? So this is this is a good one. So put my putting myself in your shoes, right? Uh, just marketing. I would actually promote maybe even a, a discount if you have a GE appliance 2017 or newer. A lot of consumers don't know the year of their appliance, but um, I would even offer a discount to encourage more phone calls uh, so you can show off your device. So we'll go over the device. We're gonna go over uh, soft skills on using the device, right? Because uh, this device is going to be game changing for you. So, okay, you know, let's just, let's just go. Uh, all right, so let's get into this. 
Uh, also, if you have any questions, because like the screen is like way in front of me. Oh, echoing. Appreciate you, Paul Brown. Hopefully, he's not, hopefully he's not echoing no more. I have my volume on, so I can make sure the broadcast doesn't drop or anything. All right, so a few things, right? Come on. Uh, I'm trying to get fancy. I got a pointer and everything. Like, all right, my pointer's gonna get the job done for me, but it looks like it's failing me. All right, so I'm going old school. I'm using the keyboard. All right. So, Encompass Day. What is this Encompass Day? Again, if you're here from another planet and never heard of Encompass Day, Encompass Day is the largest free appliance training day in the industry. That's right. Uh, technicians ascend on Atlanta, Georgia, uh, April 19th and 20th, which is a Friday and a Saturday, to attend Encompass Day. Encompass Day is a way to uh, attend four appliance repair training classes in one day. Uh, not only do we have technical, <clears throat> excuse me, technical classes, we also have business classes. Uh, there's networking. Uh, the first day of Encompass Day is actually an, an evening of networking event where you come out, you can talk to uh, the instructors, you can talk to uh, people in the industry, and hey, you can talk to me before the craziness, right? Um, so Encompass Day, so on the platform you're viewing this on right now, there will be a link for it. Um, if you need me to send it to you, feel free to reach out. But Encompass Day, plan your uh, visit now to stay for the whole day. Is, is, I believe from schedule will, will come out soon. Uh, I believe it'll be like 8 30 to uh, like 4 30. Uh, so it's a whole day, man. We're going to feed you. We're going to give away prizes. It's a great time. Uh, there's going to be vendors on site. Oh, now, now my clicker's working. Sweet. Um, GE Smart HQ, where to buy it? Well, that's the part number there. You're going to go ahead and take a screenshot or a picture or uh, rewind this later on. Uh, that's the part number. You can go into encompass.com. We do have these modules in stock. Um, also, but don't forget when you get your module, it will come with a QR code on the box and on the module itself to activate the service. Um, <clears throat> the service, you can pay an annual fee or you pay a monthly fee for the service. And, uh, so, so, but don't make the mistake getting your HQ device and say, oh, I'll wait for my first repair because there's a process, right? So you gotta, you know, so just, just Murphy's law. <laughs> you don't want to be in a repair and activate your device and then uh, try to activate your device and some sort of error. And usually there's not, but Murphy's law, right? You don't want to do that on a repair and then you, you slow down. Uh, so get it done ahead of time. Uh, GE Smart HQ module available at encompass.com. Come on, clicker. Let's go. Next one. There we go. So, the GE Smart HQ device, right? What's the reason for it? Why is GE, what is this about, right? Well, this has been a, this isn't new. Uh, it's been in development since 2017. Uh, it's, it was Nufi at one point, and now it's called GE Smart HQ Service. Uh, and this device, uh, it is built for helping you diagnose GE appliances. Uh, at first, it was only available to technicians. Uh, now it's available to everyone. And hats off, round of applause, which my soundboard was working. I'm going to press it anyway, <laughs> just in case. Um, to GE uh, for committing to uh, after warranty service, basically, right? So, uh, you know, some people say th there's a rumor out there like, oh, manufacturers want you to break it so, that, so you can buy another one. Well, that's, I don't think they subscribe to that mentality because if, uh, if, you know, you've been in a home, if that appliance breaks, most likely that the customer is going to buy a different brand, right? Now it's the truth. Even if, I don't care if that thing lasts for 30 years, people still like, ah, I should have lasted 31 years. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's get a drink, coffee break, man. Sip your coffee. <clears throat> I'm going to sip my coconut water here. 
<clears throat> my voice is like too early doing this talking. So, <clears throat> uh, hats off to GE for thinking about the out of warranty appliances and really backing their product, right? Um, so, <clears throat> with the GE Smarty Shoe device, uh, it's basically a remote control for the appliance, right? Um, you got a dashboard screen, a service document. We're going to go over all this stuff in the content here. Um, a real time diagnostics, uh, hurt, helping improve first time fix rates, right? And firmware updates and encompass a place to buy the parts. So you can go on their, their parts marketplace, put your, your encompass code in there and purchase parts or just purchase directly through us. That makes it's probably changing now, which they don't want you to go directly to the manufacturers. Um, but so as a technician, I remember going into a home and customer says, oh, it's making a weird noise, right? <laughs> Those are the hardest to fix. Weird noises, uh, mystery leaks that, you know, so what you basically have to do is rerun the machine, right? You, you know, first, or if the machine has diagnostic mode, you put in diagnostic mode after you figure out what that is and find out the, uh, Rubik's cube code for the, you know. I know somebody remember that that that, that one that's uh, left, right, 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 left, right. Y'all know that one, <laughs> that diagnostic code. Um, so this Smarty Q will save you on time. It's the reason why I'm so excited about this product uh, as a technician. Uh, saves you on time. You're in and out. But one thing I want to emphasize, and this is kind of the negative part about Smarty Q, is that. It will make you faster, but it's not really fast. Doesn't look good to the customer, right? Uh, I know y'all probably heard it before, right? Oh, you, that was quick. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so this is where soft skills come into play. So you come in with your GE Smart HQ device, even if you fix the machine, uh, find you know, write up your invoice, uh, text your lady at home or your guy, uh, <laughs> do what you need to do. To stall a little bit, show some stuff. Maybe you know, maybe take something apart. You know, I don't know maybe just a software update. Uh, just check the machine over, right? You never know. You can see like maybe a worn out bell or something you can recommend to upsell. Um, but with that extra time, give the customer value, right? Uh, earn something. I always, I've always said, earn your diagnostic fee. Don't go in there with this marriage queue device. You need a firmware update. It's fixed now. It took you 10 minutes and then say, and leave. And the customer gets upset. And you say, oh, well, it took me 20 years to learn how to do this in five minutes, which is true. But soft skills, soft skills, soft skills. Right. And then also, if you, when you finish fast, customer will definitely, the first sound, he's going to call you back like you didn't fix it right because you did it so fast. So soft skills are very, very important. Um, <clears throat> that's the GE Smart HQ device. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> it is compatible with your Android phone um, and uh, any, you know, Apple people out there. <laughs> I'm an Android guy. Uh, Apple people, is, 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 uh, it's compatible to use. Probably first, usually things are first compatible with Apple for anything else. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, and, it's, and it's through Bluetooth, right? So the nice thing about this device too is that there's no batteries, right? So when you go into a, you go into a home, this is soft skills, right? You got, the, you got these items, right? And so uh, this is a voltmeter, your drill. You can leave that drill holstered Leave that voltmeter in your bag with the GE Smart HQ device. These will be your backups. Now, don't don't completely get rid of this. But one thing with the your, your voltmeter, right, is how many times you use your voltmeter and your battery died. Like I used to keep extra batteries in my truck because I used to hate that. Because then you, you die. You ever diagnose a dryer? You don't get continuity. You know, you're like, what's going on with this thing? You find out, oh, my, my meter's dead. Um, this one doesn't have an automatic shutoff. Yeah, I have the cheaper meters. They don't have auto shutoff. Uh, but the nice thing about a Smart HQ device, there is no battery. It runs off the power from the machine, so the machine does have to be plugged in. 
So, uh, yeah, so you got one of those customers that have refrigerators in the backyard <laughs> on the deck and without no, no juice, once you diag diagnose it, you, you get bring the extension cord. Uh, but that's great. You don't have to rely on batteries, changing batteries. Um, it comes with everything you need. It comes with the Ethernet cable. Uh, you just need to download the SmartHQ app, which is in your app store, <clears throat> and get the service, which is awesome. Uh, so Smart HQ is also, you can find it, uh, so the ports, the plug-in, the Ethernet cable, wash, top load washers, is usually a port in the back. It's like old school. You know Ethernet. If you are like more than 35 years old, I want to say, you know what an Ethernet cable is. I remember dial-up internet. <laughs> so now there's a use for the old school dial-up internet cords. They're, 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 they're back to life. GE has brought them back. Um, it's in the back of the your washer. If it's a front load washer, it's usually in the dispenser drawer. You pull the dispenser drawer out, and there'll be a rubber little plug. You open that up. In a dishwasher, now a dishwasher is tricky. So <clears throat> let's pretend this is the front of a dishwasher. This is the bottom. It's underneath facing up, so you got to plug it up. So if you look underneath, you probably won't see it. You almost got to feel for it, and you'll feel the little Ethernet cable port at the bottom of a dishwasher. Um, now in the refrigerator, it'll be at the bottom or on top or in the back. <laughs> but the good news is the Smart HQ device will help you um, find the the where the port is, and it, it'll even even tell you if that machine that. A machine is compatible, so you don't have to be searching for manufacturer dates and all that that stuff. Um, firmware updates, right? That's one of the first things you want to do. Uh, firmware updates. Uh, this is awesome. Uh, again, saves you time. Uh, saves you, you know, if you didn't have this device, you don't know if maybe you need a firmware update. You kind of old school it, or a lot of machines are probably condemned because of firmware updates and in, in, in the and a lack of ability to update the software. Uh, and this is the days and time we're in now, right? They have boards and I mean, no surprise, GE has boards in all their machines, which they, they, they've done that for a while. I, I, I've seen 30 year old machines with computer boards in them. <clears throat> um, also, you can get service manuals, uh, codes. It, it's, it's, it's game changing. So we will go over that in, in the videos, right? Uh, one thing I wish that thing had had a magnet on it. I might like maybe stick a magnet on mine. I think that would be very useful. So it's not kind of dangling. So your Smart HQ device. Um, also, when you're this is supposed to be a video, but also when you are connected, your H, your Smart HQ device, it will give you readings. Right, real-time diagnostic uh, reading. So, case in point, if you're, do, you're you're looking at a dryer, the thermistor, which is kind of like one of the hardest things I would say to, uh, if you don't have the knowledge to test, because you gotta know how you know the readings of the thermistor is supposed to be. Uh, and if that thermistor is bad, you kind of you old school, you manually do it. Well, with the G Smart HQ device, it tells you what temperatures it should be. Uh, Hey, am I the old, old school? I didn't bring my my uh, temperature gun, right? Uh, not quite as accurate, right? You open the door and uh, you let all the air out, um, so it's not as quite as accurate using a temperature gun. But this allows you to know the interior temperature of that refrigerator while it's closed. And here's the video. I'm seeing a word from Juan. One second, I didn't go the way I thought it would. Hang on. I think we have sound. Let's try that again. If you have any questions, 
put it in the comment section. Uh, I will go back through and answer any questions that may be out there. Uh, feedback. All right. Yeah, that doesn't be a challenge trying to do a video. Hang on. <laughs> Okay, we should be hearing it, but we're not. Hang on. Anything apart. There we go. Now, typically, a service technician would have to remove the unit from the installation. Gain access to the control board. Hang on, I'm going to start over. Thank you for bearing with me. You're going to have a coffee break. Quick bio break. This won't be long. Get rid of the sound. Behind me is a GE profile fridge, and one of the first things you'll notice is that I'm going to keep the doors closed to ensure I obtain an accurate assessment of the situation. In other words, I want to find out exactly what's going on internally before taking anything apart. Now, typically, a service technician would have to remove the unit from its point of installation, gain access to the control board, and test each thermistor individually. And of course, how can we forget our good old friend, the infrared thermometer? These methods are often inaccurate, and even worse, they are extremely time-consuming. But using Smart HQ service, you will be able to instantly view the internal temperature values of every compartment. To get started, let's connect the Bluetooth module to the refrigerator's Ethernet port located behind the top middle cover. Now. Open up the Smart HQ service app, and in moments, your device will connect to the appliance. You can now view product information, firmware update availability, recent bulletins, service manuals, and much more. Alrighty, my friends, and as you just saw, connecting Smart HQ service to the refrigerator was extremely simple and it required no tools whatsoever. Now, let's go ahead and open up the watch box to view the internal temperature values and find out what's going on. From the dashboard screen, click Next. Click the menu button in the upper right-hand corner, and in seconds, every thermistor temperature value will be displayed, including the ones closest to the evaporators. We can even see what the ambient temperature is to ensure the environment is adequate. Needless to say, the fresh food compartment is abnormally warm. However, the other compartments seem to be okay, which verifies the problem is isolated to the fresh food compartment. Just in case you're wondering, it is not 300 degrees in the freezer area as the ice maker thermistor tells us. The reason for this reading is because the optional second ice maker has not been installed by the customer and Smart HQ service is detecting the absence of that thermistor. Oh, let it abruptly stop. Let me see. I'm going to change my sound. All right. So every time I do a video, I got to change my sound setting. So we'll get through this. We'll get through this together. All right. So, uh, yeah, that that's that's game changing. Uh, and, uh, you know, the first thing I was thinking, too, is when you go into a repair and a customer says the refrigerator makes a weird sound, right? Um, you go there, it's not making any sounds. Uh, the nice thing is about using this the H Smart HQ is you're able to turn on each individual fan and uh, 
and when you hear that funny sound, like, is that the sound, right? Because a lot of times those, those so, especially those moving parts, when it comes to temperature changes, uh, that plastic or that metal adjusts from when it was new, and it'll start making weird noises, right? Uh, definitely you want to know your resistance. So this is where your training comes in from uh, the whatever training you might have received or any school that you went to, uh, a bunch of temperatures and, and knowing your temperature readings. Uh, that'd be a fast way of knowing exactly what's wrong with the appliance. Uh, it is kind of reiterating what Juan said, right? You're diagnosing things in real time, right? That that temperature gun. I mean, I, I, I used to love that thing with dryers and stuff, but uh, this gives you real values without even opening up the machine. Uh, so now you know before. You even have to grab this uh, or grab this. You already know these things using this device. Uh, I mean, game changing is not even, you know. So, right, so if you know that that refrigerator is at 50 degrees, right, you're like, oh, something's not right, right? You're like accurate temperatures like that. So, you know, or you can say, hey, how long was this thing? When you, did you open this for? I, I got here, was it unplugged? Another reason, too, to tell you to have your, if you're going out on the repair, you think you're using your device, or you should just anyway, telling your client, hey, let me make sure my sound is working. Yes, okay. Uh, make sure that refrigerator is plugged in, right? Because they, they quote unquote want to help you out and have it already unplugged for you <laughs> to melt the ice. Nope, nope, leave it just like it is. Uh, I used to tell cousins all the time, don't uh, mess with my crime scene, right? The, 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 when you go to fix, fix or do a repair, uh, the crime scene, because it helps you diagnose, right? Like a leak, a leak is a perfect example. No, no, don't clean up the water. I mean, clean up to a point where you're not damaging your, you know, you've got wood floors or something, but uh, don't do a good job of cleaning it up. You know, oh, I cleaned it up for you. No, you, you're destroying my crime scene, and now I can't find where the leak was coming from. Uh, you know, you, you look for the water trail. Come on, clicker. All right, show some other stuff. Another little show. There we go. All right, hang on one second. We got another video from one. I want to check is that the evaporator fan is operating correctly because remember without proper airflow you won't have efficient cooling. click operate loads enter service mode and select fans next click all fans on to activate every fan motor in the refrigerator at high speed in seconds we should see an rpm reading coming from each fan indicating proper motor operation we can see RPM readings coming from the freezer and condenser fans. However, even though the control board is sending voltage to the fresh food fan, we are still getting zero RPMs, which confirms we have a problem with that fan. Incidentally, you can also activate each fan individually in the event you are trying to isolate a noise complaint. Already, my friends, and there you have it. Smart HQ service has helped us pinpoint the part that is causing the issue. And guess what? I never even open up the fridge doors. Of course, at this point, you may want to check for restrictions such as ice buildup or perhaps even a loose wire connection. In either case, SmartHQ service has pointed us in the right direction. And don't forget, this app works with both Android and iOS devices. Next, activate the water valve test to allow water to enter the dishwasher. While the unit fills, let's open up the watch box so we can monitor other components. Yep, yep. Activate the water valve test to allow water to enter the dishwasher. While the unit fills, let's open up the watch box so we can monitor other components.
By looking at the temperature, turbidity, and water pressure sensor values, we can determine if these components are operating correctly. A rise in temperature indicates the thermistor is detecting hot water is coming into the unit. The turbidity value tells us that the water is relatively clear. And lastly, a drop in pressure frequency confirms that water is indeed entering the unit. Now, using the circulation pump test, we can activate each wash area individually. Let's start with the lower spray arm and let it run for approximately 15 seconds. We'll turn it off and move on to the upper spray arm. Finally, let's activate the silverware wash area. As we can see, every wash area is operating correctly. Next, activate the water valve test to allow... <laughs> so that was uh, that was nice. The, the, the dishwasher. Now, if you don't have that clear door, we do offer that. Uh, if you've seen on the last slide, we have a part show you the part number to offer that clear door. Uh, probably a must-have if you're doing dishwasher repairs. So uh, this graph here shows refrigerator cycle history, right? Uh, it shows you the, the recent operations of the appliance. Now I laugh because I think y'all already know. So this kind of this is a truth teller. <laughs> now don't throw your customer say you're lying, and this shows it. Uh, yep. So if that like the, if the the door was kept open, geez, my excuse tell it. It says a history. Um, you know, or they say, oh, you know, uh, um, a washing machine. Oh, I, did. I, I, used, I put normal loads in there. The GE's Marriage Q will tell you if it was a heavy load, what cycles it was it was on. Oh, I washed my comforter, and I put it, I put it on delicate or something, and it showed that you did on normal cycle or, you know, um, you know, or even heavy duty. And heavy duty is kind of depends on the machine, right? Heavy duty means extra agitation. So, and then in, in some cases, it, it, so extra agitation. So I, I personally put, like, comfort stuff on delicates uh based off the, the, the fabric right uh, you, you know it basically it's the agitation so you want minimum agitation because you don't want to comfort and stuff like that uh now if you got a, a load of jeans towels that's heavy duty um so this will tell you exactly what happened so now you're not so man so hang on so so g smart hq also puts these on the shelf it doesn't eliminate them right but these don't come out your bag as fast, right? So it lowers the uh, you being uh, relying on these tools. Also, you're not you're less reliant on the customer, right? Because you have to interview your customer, right? It's the first thing you do. You walk in. All right, tell me what happened. What, you know, because first thing customers want to do is tell you what's wrong, right? Oh, but my dryer it needs new heat element because it's not not hot. Uh, did you did somebody test the element? No, no, no. It's got to be that. So anyway, y'all know that story. Um, so this will tell this re less reliant on the customer. Uh, you know, sometimes they're embarrassed, right? Uh, you know, they overloaded or put too much detergent in. Um, so this is a truth teller. <laughs> but remember, ladies and gentlemen, remember your soft skills. <laughs> Be polite. Um, so yeah, this is game changing, man. So cycle history. Uh, so these are all things you need, right, to uh, make a intelligent decision on what's going on with the appliance.
Uh, so GE Smart HQ is basically tech support in the palm of your hand, literally, right? Um, so these are all the different, this is all the different data GE Smart HQ shares. And this is just scratching the surface. It's a very intuitive uh, tool. Uh, tells you everything you need. Uh, it gives you firmware updates. You can put notes in there. Uh, so if you was in there, you know, customer education, oh, my, I think I have a slide about that, but uh, you can put notes in there. Uh, yep. So, uh, so if you did a customer education call uh, where you, you informed them, but hey, don't do this and this won't happen. You won't see my face again. Um, but if you want to see my face again, keep overloading your washing machine. Keep the refrigerator, refrigerator door open. <laughs> um, block, you know, blocking the, the air path. You know, air circulation is very important for refrigeration, for dryers, right? Uh, so you'll know if that lint screen wasn't clean, right? What's, what's the three components of dryer repair? Is airflow, tumbling, and heat. Right, those are the three components of dryer repairs, and so uh, those are the things you, you you monitor when you're troubleshooting. Um, but yeah, leaving the door open. A lot of a lot of times, a lot of refrigerators now actually have an alarm when the door is open too long. Um, but this will definitely improve your first complete times, uh, which means the more times you're freed up, the more times the more time you have to do other service calls and more money you can make. Uh, so this definitely, definitely pays for itself, right? So um, your customer education is in soft skills is definitely super important. I got a couple unnecessary slides here. I guess I should have been clicking while I was talking. <laughs> and again, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. I'll get to them after the show. Um, if you want your GE Smart HQ device, log on to encompass.com. Don't forget to log in with your account number. If you don't, you will have retail pricing. Excuse me. Um, firmware updates. So one of the first things you do when you log on to GE Smart HQ, it will cover firmware updates, uh, Probably one of the first things that it wants you to do, um, and we kind of talked about this to exhaustion, I guess. Uh, service bulletins, right? It informs you on service bulletins instantly, right? So, what, do you, what, is, what was all this? What does it look like in the past before it's my HQ? A phone call, right? A uh, looking up a website. This stuff is instant, time saving. The more time you save, the more time you make, or more money you make. Excuse me. Um, yeah, those service bulletins are game changing. So Smart HQ uh, is available on GE, GE appliances from 2017 up. Uh, if you have you're working on a GE profile, a GE profile has a lot more bells and whistles than a regular GE products. Uh, and so that profile definitely <laughs> you want to have a smart HQ device in your hand. I don't know if y'all heard that. That is very loud thunder. Um, so, uh, so for your GE Smart HQ uh, parts device parts, you can go to encompass.com. Uh, you put in your model number. We have uh, exploded views. And the nice thing about the exploded views, they actually show, you can click on the part that's on the chart and add it to the side. So that eliminates, again, we're saving time. That eliminates you looking up a part number, having slow uh, internet. Uh, everything is right there. Uh, we are authorized with GE. So if you're an authorized GE servicer, you can do your warranty repairs through Encompass. Uh, if you are a non-GE servicer, you can still buy your GE parts through Encompass, uh, but the fact that we have the parts for the authorized GE servicers means we're gonna have in stock GE parts. Uh, and most likely, if you use your local parts store, they buy their parts from us also. Uh, so this gives, definitely gives you an opportunity uh, to have access to 
what the other guys have access to, right? So that's our website. Uh, yeah, yeah. In, and I see video game controls and all that stuff. We're a part supplier. Uh, that stuff is um, side hustles, I'll call it. <laughs> but we have all the parts you need to be your primary supplier. Um, so if you have questions, this is the uh, links to the GE website. Uh, GE's phone number. If you uh, have questions on setting up your device, you can always call me also. Um, but let's go. Let's see what else I got to click on here. Okay. So we'll come back to this. And we're, let's do a demo of this washer over here. I know what y'all, that's, that's what y'all been waiting on. So I do have a second camera. Let's, let's see how this works. I'm getting fancy with y'all. Boom. Test, test, test. Okay. Should I sound now? I think what happens when I switch to the other window and took mine off, it uh, messed up the sound. So, y'all gonna have to, gonna have to look at two of me. <laughs> All right, so you'll get two angles. <laughs> Okay, you got me. All right, cool. All right, so let's start over. <laughs> um, so when you have uh, so game changing, another game changing thing with this device is that it has the model number, right? The model number. Uh, so 
y'all know already know a lot of times the, the stickers might be worn off and may have not show. Uh, it's great to have a model number on here so that you can uh, look up your parts and look at you know diet schematics and whatnot. Um, let me adjust the camera. So hang on, see. Let's see. Just the machine. Boom. All right, so we got two angles and fancy. All right, so we got two angles getting fancy here. So we've got, you know, so with the G Smart HQ, this camera, I'm, I'm gonna do that. Hopefully, I can see this. Uh, you can do diagnostic history. You can upload photos for this machine. So now you have a record. Uh, you know, documentation, uh, training videos are on here. Uh, also, you can link your phone's camera with GE directly. So if you're calling uh, tech support, they can walk you through and they can visually see you on the repair and the machine to help walk you through repair. I mean, this, this, this stuff is just completely game changing, right? So let's go ahead and di do a diagnose this machine. So repairing real simple and easy. Loading, boom. Look at that, document search, service manuals, mini manuals. This is training bulletins, everything. So let's go to next. First thing I ask for is what? Firmware updates. We can look through cycle history, operate loads, diagnostic tests. So game changing. All right, so let's go in. We're gonna do diagnostic tests. Now, here's something that's important that you need to know, right? See that bottom one? It says enter service mode. That's the first thing you want to do. Uh, this is the only thing that could be a little confusing because on top it says spin cycle agitate, but the first thing you need to do to, to do that is enter service mode. So now we enter service in the mode. I'm gonna Machine just clicked when I did that. And we're going to, now I'm going to do something that y'all are not to do. <laughs> I'm going to, for the sake of demonstrating, I got this little lid switch. <laughs> for the sake of demonstration, See my device is fast. Only thing, this thing needs a magnet. That's the only thing I recommend. I don't know if it messes up anything, but I would stick a magnet on this so it stays on the machine, not hang dangle down. Uh, all right. So let's lock the lid. So if you heard that, so now the lid is locked. And let's put it on spin. Going through the rotations, locking the lid. The 
water valves activated. Transition to spin. So look, the mode shifter was on spin. So I just I just switched the mode shifter. Just tell me. This is nice thing. Is it tells you everything it's doing. Tell you everything that's going on. Here we go. Look at that. All that with my cell phone. All right, so I did all that with my cell phone. Um, and I missed it. It, it showed me real time. Let's spin it again. Uh, it showed me a uh, real time graphic with spin test. Uh, so if I wanted to, I can, I can click this to uh, activate the water valves, uh, the mode shifter all the components, the LCD, um, anything that electricity goes to, <laughs> uh, this device allows you to control it. Uh, this is definitely game changing when you walk into a customer uh, and you come in with this module and you're able to do something that they def they can't do on their own. That always, always impresses customers to do that. Uh, this device is available at encompass.com and let's go to, so we're gonna wrap this up. Uh, so don't forget to uh, register for Encompass Day, come out, meet me, meet, uh, you know, learn something, network, uh, come hang out at our black party that we have going on, uh, register today for Encompass Day. And is that my last slide? I guess that's my last slide. All right. Well, uh, yeah, it's nine o'clock also. So yeah, we all need to get to get back to work. Uh, again, so if you have any questions, feel free uh, to contact me. My information is below. Uh, this video will be available for on demand. So if you need to go go back and rewatch it, uh, it's available for you to do so. Um, and that's all I got today. So check our next training out. You go to our training schedule. Our training schedule is on our website. Uh, the website is still you know, under development, but information is still there. Uh, also on social media platforms, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, and uh, the Facebook group, Appliance Repair Community Network, supported by Encompass. Recommend you join that so you can stay up to date on the different trainings that we have available. Uh, so we've got February schedules already out. Uh, that schedule will have additions to it also. Um, there's going to be something every week uh, that we're training you on. Uh, my next, I'm also doing train, uh, I'm training you on the part. <clears throat> so we have a couple series. We have appliance one-on-one uh, -on -one teaching you the basics of blocking and tackling <laughs> on appliance repair. <clears throat> I'm, teach, I'm also doing a series on the parts that you use to replace, right? So my next one will be on uh, drain pumps and just going over the technology of drain pumps. Uh, I feel that's something that's not uh, taught usually. Uh, you know, we kind of know when parts go bad, but sometimes it's important to know why they go, they go bad. Uh, and knowing that allows you to educate the customer, educate yourself. Um, and, oh, this thing going to spin again. <laughs> Uh, so we, we're going over that. So catch, catch these series, man. And if anything that we don't cover, you would like to know. Uh, so let me know. And uh, yeah, the Jeez for HQ, man, still going through the diagnostic. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is Reggie Williams. Thank you for tuning in. Uh,
my information below if you need me. And I'll catch you on the next series. Y'all get out there and go fix something. And again, if you need anything, you know what to do. Lean on your rep. Now go fix something. I'll see y'all.